Hello, hello, and welcome to another wonderful episode of Submitted for Your Approval, the weekly card review show for Collective, the community-created card game. Uh, I am joined today, as always, by my faithful co-host, Grief. Howdy, folks. And my panelist, Empty Folder. Hello, everyone. And today we have a special guest. We're doing guests again. We don't really know what our guest policy is going to be going forward. We're just probably going to have guests when we can have guests. And today I'm very excited to welcome uh, Thrifty Fish into the show. Hello. For those of you who don't know, Thrifty Fish is responsible for like maybe like a third of the art on the free art sheet or something ridiculous like that. Um, I don't actually have numbers on that. But he, he just contributed so much to Collective's early art and uh, particularly like stuff like the, the cutest stuff from Intera and some other stuff from different places. And he's just been such a great member of the community. So excited to finally have you on. So, Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to jump straight into it, starting with the Sumo Squash. The Sumo Squash, uh, so this is for the uh, accepted submissions from last week. Sumo Squash is a three-drop spirit action from nowhere in particular with a friendly unit deals damage equal to its HP to another unit. Oh, wow. I missed that when I selected this card. So we have a reverse fight card where you can deal damage equal to HP. Um, or Bite, sorry. Bite is an effect that's showed up a couple times in like Magic is the name of the effect for deals equal to its attack. But this could actually give something fairly interesting to uh, Spirit in particular, which I'm glad that's the affinity it's in. And maybe help Dat out? I don't know. Uh, Grief, what do you think of this? Um, it's basically something similar to an Iron Body Slam cards from a Slate Aspire, where you basically try to approach the damage from a HP perspective. It's cute, it could help out that, but I think we need more cards that work in that regard, mm -hmm. that actually buff, certain, um, buff that certain aspect. You could probably play it better in Marie, since she has an innate um, hero voice that gives you more HP for a unit or yourself, so that is something that can benefit from it, as well as, what was it, a spirit that basically removes cards from your graveyard and buffs something. Mm -hmm. and HP in, um, in addition to that. Yeah, so I think it's good that we have these effects. So one of the things I'm going to be talking about a lot this episode probably is in two months we have rotation. Um, and that's been all fresh on a lot of people's minds about how are we going to deal with post-rotation and we need solid removal. So particular stuff like Darwin Delude. I mean, it wasn't really played all that much, but Darwin Delude's going away. What are we going to do about that? We're losing other spirit removal tools. What are we going to have in its place? I think this is a solid choice. Uh, what do you think about this, Empty? Yeah, I, I would agree. I think it's a solid choice. The interesting thing about this is that it's actually the unit that's dealing the damage. So yeah. there's some neat things. Like if you just have some deadly unit sitting around, uh, then you don't need to worry about how much HP the enemy has. And then, of course, like life bonders work quite well with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a solid card. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about this, uh, Thrifty? Um, my, my immediate thought when I saw this, and this is going to sound absolutely ridiculous, um, but was um, playing it as just a one-off and go tall held them um, for when you have like that 18-18 Cassie just to smack a minion because, you know, she's going to have life bond and just gain 18 health, destroy whatever, you know, big green man they've got going on or whatever over there um which i know is not its you know main intended <laughs> purpose but just would be something fun to do with it yeah well, um, but overall it this... seems fun <laughs> yeah well Wait if you want to run this off of any i could see it in equipment uh with sam the ram in particular um this could be pretty bad this pretty should good. this should first of all trigger slayer effects and second of all does fire starter rotate i think fire starter <laughs> does so this will trigger Slayer effect. So if you have something like um, Sam the Ram or Lizathep, I mean, obviously Lizathep's going to rotate out uh, Soul Claimer. Um, this can get you two procs off your Lizathep, or this can let your Sam recover from his duelist back and forth because he doesn't have any sort of native regeneration. So yeah, this a lot of great tools for this in several different affinities. 
might be worth a penalty because this is then becomes a four drop removal that can also get you other bonuses. So we'll see. Um, Bully the Kindling is a one drop strength action from Lux with rebound and force target unit to attack this turn. So this is like a really interesting staple space we've never really played around with. I'm going to let Grief take it away and do his analysis on it first. Um, I like forced, uh, force attacking effects because they can actually force exhausted units to attack. Therefore, you can either um, coax an enemy unit into attacking into one of your blockers, which probably spiders are rejoicing. Okay, or do we getting a rebound effect that's only costing us two mana to actually have something attacking us? Um, on the other hand, you can also use it as an aggro tool. So, yeah, putting an uh, putting a duelist. Uh, into, exa into exhaust state after it duels, you can actually force it to attack, which helps out a lot. Even stuff like um, green aggro, red aggro, they can all benefit from it. In blue, I don't know, especially since uh, after post uh, looking after post rotation, but overall, this will be a good card or will be relatively useful throughout the next uh, rotation cycle. Yeah, I think it's good. We've never really had got to see what an effect like this will do, especially with stuff like Life Bond um, and being able to get two swings out of a Life Bond unit uh, or like a Life Bond Duelist or something like that. Um, Thrifty, what's your thoughts on this? Um, I don't know. I, I really like the uh, just all the wax cards. Those weren't really yeah. around the last time I was playing. Um, and so, you know, I had just been playing a wax ruffling deck when I saw this and um, was thinking about the turn to get your Heldum uh, – you know xp potential like you didn't get to play the wax first turn but you can just drop it um then target it with this so you proc its target so you have a one three swinging on turn two which is just you know it's cool like as a a safety thing there um and also just being able to make stuff attack i feel like there's a lot of decks right now that don't want their stuff to attack um that could yeah. just be like you know the few people i've played on ladder but um you know they just they want to use their actives and have their minions sit there and you know not do anything except the three that they have doing stuff and um, always being able to make enemy minions attack has been useful, so I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what about you, Empty Folder? What's your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I love this design. I think it's great. Because, like, this card is just so versatile. Like, like Grief brought up, um, you can use it with duelists to let them attack after they've dueled something. It can be pseudo-removal, because you can force your opponent's small units to attack into your stuff. And then, of course, with, like, Wax Ruffling, this can boost it up and let it attack the turn it comes in. So I yeah. think it's a great card. One thing I have been a little worried about with these Lux cards actually has nothing to do with, like, the, the mechanical space, but I'm starting to get a little bit worried about the artistic space because, um, with exceptions of stuff like Grandpa Sleepy, the art is getting a little hard to differentiate because they're all candle people. And they're against this landscape that's just a bunch of candles. Um, there's a couple stuff like the flying thing and the thing, but I'm just, I don't know. This does make me a little bit worried. I do love the art. I love the art style. It's just, I'm worried that the, that the, um, sort of the, the design space of the art is kind of running out a little bit. I, I feel like in, in that regard, that it's something kind of like when, when we had grief only doing, you know, like Walnut cards or whatever that like, it was like, man, you know, they, they kind of all look the same or whatever. There's no way anybody's going to be able to capture that, uh, like idea yeah. that you know griefs you know mind has created and terrified us all with but i feel like the community normally steps in there and they're like you know you have even like i know for instance like dia has you know he can take basically any realm and, and with feedback you know he can create something that you know oh, like yeah that fits even though it's a completely different art style so yeah i yeah. feel like maybe bird will you know if that becomes a problem just have to reach out to all the other artists and you can have stuff that really fits even, you know, if somebody else is drawing it differently, it's really just, you know, everybody has their style. And I think birds is kind of very indicative of, of what you're saying, like this wax thing. And they kind of look like the wax in the background, but as soon as we get somebody else drawing cards for here, which I feel yeah. like is going to come because they're taking off, that'll be super easy to overcome that. Yeah. Okay. The Fishman Swashbuckler is a two drop mind one, two fish pirate from Osagarth. So we got another fish pirate or another pirate in. When this attacks or blocks, deal one damage to a unit. So I think we also had this same week, correct me if I'm wrong, the Salt of the Sea come, uh, get in. The let you draw pirates. Don't remember, I think it is, yeah. I think we did. And so 
this means now we're going to get better. Uh, we're going to, we actually have, uh, I know Mystic has been aiming for the whole ammo pirate thing. I don't think that's realistically going to happen anytime soon, but this could give us the tools for maybe having um, pirate tribal in Ashgurdy and particularly possibly maybe saboteur pirates. I know there's the existing one in Washad's Corsair that's a saboteur, wants to hit your, uh, just gives you extra bonuses for hitting face. This could be really cool if we had like a general saboteur reward because it can um, uh, it can deal double damage or something. Um, so who picked this one? This is your pick, right, Empty? No, no it's, uh, it's mine. Oh, we got all out of order. Uh, Thrifty, go. Uh, yeah, so I honestly just picked it because I thought it was really fun. Um, I, I kind of liked the way the uh, the effect kind of goes with the art, the idea behind the art here. You know, like you have like the sword stab and then shoot, or the old block and then shoot, which I thought was really cool. Like it does that little one damage every time it pings. I, I, I talked a lot about this one on stream when I was voting on it. it. It seems like a card that, you know, I think is in the right place as far as cost and everything, but, but if it's not, I feel like it's something we can play with the stats enough to make it you know fit where it needs to be and, and update it relatively easily i don't think the effect is something where you know it's going to be impossible to get it to the right place and i just thought it really just just fit and it was like a good card overall definitely i agree empty what's your thoughts on this yeah i i think it's a neat design i just think it's pretty undertuned right now because like at two mana for one two it's really easy to deal with yeah. And one damage isn't going to really be able to protect it from much when it attacks. I actually thought this was one mana when I first saw it, which would be really strong. Uh, but as soon as I realized it was two, I was kind of like, oh, yeah. Um, there, There is like the thing where you could give it deadly, which is pretty good, because then like it can block and shoot whatever it's blocking uh, to instantly kill it. But yeah. then like if you're putting in that much work, it is still a one-two. Uh, which means your opponent can just remove it really easily. Yeah, I can see maybe if you're looking to get like a really early guard up, you get lucky enough to get like an irradiated bite, give me a deadly ward. But um, I don't really know about how, how plausible that scenario is. Grief, uh, what do you think about this card? I think we actually talked about this card before. And we already it was a different version, actually. It had the ammo mechanic on it because I remember the artwork. <laughs> Um, yeah, nothing much, uh, nothing really changed much about my arguments back then, except for change ammo um, or ammo batteries. This is okay. It basically seems like a draft card, and that's it. Yeah. Okay, and the Kagamusha is a three-drop strength action from Yamato with choose a samurai in hand, create a copy of it, it duels a unit, then banish it. This, by the way, is from Metronoid, who is a new creator, and they got a card in, I think, their first week, right? Yeah. So congrats, yeah. Metronoid. Okay, so let's talk about this. Um, Yamato is obviously the place where you're going to have a lot of these samurai, and we're getting a lot of really diverse designs coming in from, like, Acoustic and uh, Daya is still doing stuff. And then actually we had a couple more come in from Metronoid. So it's really, it's kind of tricky for me to evaluate this because I don't really know what it's going to be able to do after more Samurai get in. I do, however, like that it's obviously super flexible. It can potentially be removal. And so it's it's appropriately cost at like three. Overall, I think this is, is really clean design. What do you think, Empty? Yeah, I think this is an amazing design. I was like really impressed when I saw this, and I'm happy it made it in. Uh, I think like with current samurai, it may be a bit hard to utilize, but like yeah. there's so much potential with this, with like Slayer triggers and entrance triggers, that I I think it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, and it finally like it really defines the the samurai's identity and is like a synergy card for that, which yeah. samurai have been sort of lacking. Um, and then on top of that, like post rotation, um, we're not going to have nearly as much removal in strength. Mm -hmm. And I think this will be a, a good option to replace uh, the old three cost removal spells that are rotating out. Well, yeah. And this, well, of course, specifically in Samurai, but of course, this does give Baldwin maybe a tool to get like a, a dedicated Samurai deck going. 
uh, because we're going to see a lot of those older designs uh, rotate out and some of this new fresh blood that's been flocking to Yamato for some reason. I'm super excited. Uh, What do you think, Grief? I like this card a lot. Um, I actually had told the creator Metronaut already. This is something that I was basically waiting for for Samurai, and my first question was, how best can I break it? <laughs> um, the funniest part is you cannot really utilize it with Entomb effects unless you can manage to kill off your own unit during the dueling process, which is funny if you utilize this card with someone like um, in Legacy Hinata, which then when she dies puts a card from your deck into play. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the other hand, this will be pretty much the card that will make uh, basically show and tell samurai a thing for uh, forever, as long as it is uh, as long as it is in standard and in legacy. So this will put anything from stuff like um, Ro- uh, neon samurai shenanigans, where you want to count, uh, where you want to abuse entrance effects to. Um, Dueling or Slayer, or even in Tomb effects that you want to kill on your own Samurai, or even movement, um, card movement changes where the card counts for different zones. Depending on what the uh, Samurai you want to abuse with the card is actually, this will probably always have a place for that. Yeah. What do you think about this, Thrifty? Um, on the on the positive end, I'm basically in just in agreement with Grief and, and, and Folder there. Um, I will say that I can see this becoming a card that people reference as like an excuse to not let another card in. They're like, uh, you can't make this samurai because remember, you can always Kagamusha it, you know, and uh, you that's know, a potential it's just problem, too good yeah. that way. So it's like a, pot- a potential limiter for samurais there. You know, it's it's a small one, but I think, I, you know, just in the past, uh, we've seen cards that like seem super simple and super innocent at first. And then like it's used as a limiter in like discussions for, you know, months to come and um, I could just see that being case. I don't think it'll be, you know, super limiting like that, but I could see that being an excuse. But otherwise, I, I think it's pretty good and fine overall. Well, yeah, I think with the banish clause, the, the, the biggest something would have to get before, in order to be a problem, is we would have to start seeing Samurai at like seven and higher. Because at six, you can utilize whatever Samurai you get as a mass, uh, mass of many men component. Um so like uh neon you can drop get your neon ronin and then mass it together with something or clone of or uh, the clone cards but the only one that matters there is like bio brilliance which is where is is going to be worth uh it's kind of expensive so i think yeah to really break this you would need to see some really good samurai design specifically at seven or higher cost um because it does damage uh, I... it at the end yeah, you. I don't think you can copy it unless you do something because, like, it banishes immediately after a duel. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, it banishes immediately after the duel. So this is basically flash without without the flesh Hulk shenanigans. Yeah. So yeah, you can't really. I there might be a way to cheese it later on. It depends on how big the uh, the uh, Slayer and other tools get. Um, I forgot about that because that was another aspect we were talking about when balancing it. Uh, Because I was actually on the Discord. I wanted to give a a, a shout out to this because it looked like a new designer and I was a little bit, uh, I wanted to at least talk about it. The Flathead Creepy Guys, the three drop neutral 2 2 human demon from Duskmere. With summon, you lose 5 HP, then scour for draw two cards. So I mostly wanted to give notes. That's why I, I picked this card to talk about, to give notes. First of all, this can all fit on a common text box. So uh, a lot of the new designers don't really know. We, ha- we, have, we actually have limits on how much of certain rarities can get in. So we don't want to see, it really hurts people to see rares on things that could fit in smaller boxes. Um, and so shift the rarity down. First of all, and, and second of all, this is one of those things where you want to look at the other stuff that's in the game and see how the power level compares. Because this is ridiculous bonkers busted i don't know and the other thing is the flavor is kind of off does anyone else really want to talk about this or do we want to i personally i, I really would just call... say that i'll oh, go ahead grief you, you i wouldn't really technically call it busted um 
it basically rips out a fifth of your starting life total to allow you to draw two cards that you perhaps may actually select it to draw, which is pretty damn fine. Um, oh yeah, are... you lose five. Ooh, this is actually kind of interesting now that I look at it. Um, in that case, it's still a um, colorless unit, so therefore that it could probably fit everywhere. So that's basically the strongest aspect that it is neutral. On your end, put it into probably strength, which would yeah. probably fit the most uh, and make it exclusive or something like that. Yeah, sure. Three cost, two, two. It's technically meticulous research um, paired with um, the uh, paired with what's it called? Scouring orb. Scouring orb. Scouring, yeah, orb, scouring yeah. orb on a two, two body. This could also be a four cost unit if it stays neutral. This thing is nearly okay. At three cost neutral, it's a little bit too good. Well, then again, you're losing five HP. Yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit too good. I, I missed it. It was you lose. Um, I would almost make a deal five damage to you because I think we have synergies with stuff like that. They're they're rotating out, but yeah. Uh, this deals five damage to you. Scour four, draw two for. I I would say three in strength would be the way to do it, and then maybe shrink it to a common box. Um, check the free art sheet. There's got to be something for this, right? Right, guys? Hmm? I don't know. Like, Dusk Mirror, there, there's got to be plenty of stuff on the sheet. Empty, what do you think of this? Um, I... I don't know. It's sort of already been said. I think the power yeah. level is, like, slightly too high, but mm -hmm. not that much. I... Like, I think moving it to strength might yeah. honestly just be enough. Yeah, moving it, yeah. What do you think, Ditto. Tristy? Ditto. I was, I ba Grief basically said everything I was going to say, so Sorry. he hopped right in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, But yeah, so check out the free art sheet, check the rarity, and make sure it's in the smallest thing it could fit in, and just flip this to strength. This is actually really, really close to a good design, which is sad, because because of those small flaws it had, it got zero votes, so. Well, at the moment, obviously. Could be in the game by the time you guys are watching this video. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yoriko Ichi. Uh, this is another one of those great die arts that's been floating around. So, Yoriko Ichi, Ichi is a three-drop strength 1-1 one, one insect samurai from Yamato with duelist and entrance create Yoriko Ni and San. Yoriko, Ni, and San are both one-drop, one-one duelist insect samurais from Yamato. Yamato. So, one thing I wanted to talk about with this is we have stuff that's going away that we need to pay attention to. I want to talk about this specifically in relation to rotation. So, Lightning Surge will be gone. Moonlight's Judgment will be gone. We will have a couple of ways to deal with this fairly well. But they're kind of waning, and is it okay to print something that's just a bunch of one ones attached together now? Um, I'm actually gonna have empty folders start on this one. Um, I I think it will be fine. Uh, I don't think this is really gonna to break too much because, for one, uh, strength. Even though they got like the new hero, they still don't do swarms all that well. Yeah. Um. I think the best card for Swarms and Strength right now is Raise the Banner, and I'm pretty sure that one's going away. Yeah. Um, I know, uh, like, Azra's brought it up that, like, this would be a card to work with uh, Kage Mushu, but uh, I don't really think it's all that great there, because then, you know, like, you're basically just playing this twice. The only difference is that the first time you get the duel immediately, essentially. Yeah, um, yeah I, I just think it's a fine card. And so the, so the best tools for this specifically are Flickr tools, which only really exist in mind at the moment. Um, yeah. And then there's, I mean, we're not going to have stuff like Judgment where you can really get value off of sweeping these guys, but I don't know how hostile the world is for 1-1s at the moment. Grief, what's your thoughts? I think it's technically fine. This reminds me basically of any kind of spirit card that um, spat out kind of 
frog tokens or stuff like that, like bullfrog trainer. This is just in a similar vein. So three cost unit that spits out three one ones that each duel. It's okay. Yeah. Maybe we can find a way to cheat it out from the graveyard and so on and so forth later down the line. But so far, this is fine. And what do you think, Ruffy? Yeah, I, I, this is another one I talked a lot about on stream when I was voting on it. Um, it's just it, to me, it feels I, I think maybe like a little weak, especially um, now, like a current, you know, like maybe not post rotation, but I just. It just feels like maybe like a point under like where it should be. Like maybe, you know, Yoriko Ichi there should be like a one, two or something and then it would be fine or whatever. But like as is, it feels like, you know, it's a three body, you know, French vanilla or whatever, if you want to say it that way. But it just I guess the entrance is what makes it not super, um, you know, basic or whatever. But l like was mentioned, I think by one of you a while ago, there's just not really tools for for entrance and strength yeah. at the moment. So maybe there will be. But. I don't know. I, I think it's fine. Like I think it would, you know, come in and maybe have a niche in some decks, but um, unless you're running like some kind of, you know, go wide deck, I don't, I don't see much uh, room for it. Well, yeah, and because Baldwin in particular doesn't support a lot of go wide uh, off the bat. Um, that's more of a Lazaro thing. So I don't really know. We don't really have a strength swarm here. So um, technically Lazaro, but he does that with. Vampires and in Penumbra, but Penumbra will rotate out. Yeah. Yep. It'll be an interesting world without it, certainly. Okay, now this one I'm actually super excited about. Uh, the Portside Militia is a one drop strength, one two, Nightling from Sviatlo with has frenzy equal to attack. So this is one of, this actually reminds me of um, one of my favorite magic cards that for some reason the name just escaped me right a second before I started talking. Um, and it's a one drop, one, one double striker in white. And this is basically that because Frenzy is our closest thing to like a double strike type ability. And the idea is that it's a good staple in any sort of equipment deck and strength is our equipment color. And you could potentially make this really big, really scary, really fast. And I am excited to see what we could potentially do with this and what this could potentially do for a Nightling deck. Um, Thrift, do you want to go first on this one? Uh, sure, yeah. I think I have, I've actually maybe been playing uh, um, an equipment deck by Pwapka. And so when I saw this, I was like, oh, yeah, this would be fun. Uh, I, fe I feel like it was in a fine place. Like, you know, it, it might be something that with the right tools, we we're like, man, this is kind of a problem, but... I don't feel yeah. like it would be that way yet. I think it would be okay, you know, because it's still pretty easy to remove, especially early on. Um, and then there's, I mean, there's so many cards that become a problem once you've buffed them that much that I don't think this would, you know, make much of a difference. Um, and they, they can always just, you know, not block it. And then, you know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't think this is busted. I, I think it's pushed. I think this is about as powerful as you can get a one drop, maybe a little bit more somehow. But I definitely think it's pushed. And that's part of why I think it's really flashy. It's got 15 votes on the Reddit and it's doing pretty good. Grief, what do you think? I like this a lot as an aggro tool. And I think we also had a fairy that told us the same thing, but had flying. Um, and gained, I think, plus one, plus one. Was it Brightling? A Brightling? Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, the Brightling sources. But I think that one cost came out a little later. That came out a little later and had flying, as I said, and basically yeah. grew on its own. So this, as a one drop, common. Perfect. Heldum will be uh, Heldum will be glad to see that thing. I also like it because food, equipment, yeah. any kind of uh, token or uh, anthem effect shenanigans will this will be an instant include in this kinds of deck. But yeah, this actually legit makes me interested in building. It, it was interesting included in several different decks, and actually has me who wasn't that interested before asking about what a Hawkins Nightling deck would look like. Empty, what do you think? Um, so kind of the issue I think this will face is that basically you're going to want Wax Ruffling all the time instead of this because uh, that card is really, really strong. And then this is sort of like your backup Wax Ruffling when you don't draw it. Um, I think it's going to be a bit hard to like make full use of the Frenzy because a lot of the time this is going to be... Uh, 
chump block by like one unit. Um, the moment strength has a way to give this overrun yeah. is the moment it's going to become like really good. Because well, um, an efficient way to do, give it overrun. Yeah, obviously. Because the repeated like, bites a way to give out anything, anything. Yeah. This becomes like super threatening. And uh, I don't really think strength has that right now, especially yeah. post rotation. But like that's definitely something to watch out for. Mm-hmm. Time for an overrun, Nightling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if that if that was made, this would be like a really good Nightling card. Nightling charger and have yeah. the two of them charging into battle together or something. Okay, this is uh, this is the start of your picks, right, Grief? Uh, no, that's still yours, I think. Or was it your? No, that's yours, Thrifty, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's, yeah that's you guys mine. knocked my uh, document out of order, so thanks. Um, Lurking Fishman is a three drop. Mind 3 2 Fish Horror from HPL uh, with Untargetable and End of Turn. Replace a random non fish unit with a Lurking Fishman. This loses this ability. So it's like that Galactic Balance thing, but like a tool for like polluting people's boards. And this has a lot of weird stuff going on with it. Uh, yeah, so I, I picked this one just, just sheerly off of um, just nonsense value. Um, I, I don't think it has a lot of upvotes or anything. I just I just really like it as a card. So it's untargetable. So you know they're not gonna be able to remove it very easily. Um, but you know obviously you're running fish, so it's not gonna replace any of your cards. Uh, what what I thought about though is like you know in the situation where your opponent's just running a bunch of small things that um, they're buffing with like auras or whatever, then you you kind of could screw yourself on accident. Like you know if they you play this one turn and then they come out you know, and play, you know, a three mana that summons three one ones and then they all turn into three twos slowly and um and then they just, you know, swing with, you know, an, an R above the board, then it's, you know, fine. So it's it's probably too good, you know. Yeah. Maybe it's terrible. It, it's just such a, a in a such a weird position. I just uh I was fresh off of, you know, seeing gun sword fish guy and I was like, ah, here's another cool fish guy that I really like. So I just thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, so the problems of this, in my opinion, are kind of coming at it from all sides. It's got untargetable, which this is already really annoying, and that's just kind of compounding the problem. You want to maybe encourage someone to fight to make this live if they're going to gunk your whole board with it. Um, Personally, I've wanted to see one more common because I happen to know that HPL has almost finished Realm Age. And so (laughs) that kind of ties into my personal biases against it. But the other thing is just, I don't think it creates fun play patterns, especially, I mean, it's just an annoying control card. And because it's untargetable, it's a really annoying control card. Um, But beyond that, I really like this actual end of turn effect. And I think it could be potentially interesting. I just think it's maybe a little bit too much. Uh, Grief, what do you think? This thing is hilariously annoying to deal with. Because due to the untargetab- uh, untargetability, you can't even sacrifice that bastard. Yeah. <laughs> sure, you gain three twos, but what are you doing with three twos if you're an aggro deck or specifically rely on the Lord? And, oh yeah, Foddy, I looked at you. I looked at you weirdly. Now you are a fish stick. Deal with it. I personally like these kinds of uh, weird uh, quirky effects in this regard because there are pretty much good applications where you can use it because the moment you give this thing away to your opponent, they have to deal with it because at the end of the turn, this thing will trigger on their side and will just pollute the board every, uh, every time they just manage to play one unit. It will definitely be a lurking fishman at the end. Yeah, and that's why personally, I think the intargetable is too much. What do you think, Empty? Uh, I, I really don't like it. So <laughs> the the problem I see is, I think the current version is, like, pretty weak. Uh, since like this is random, it's really hard to construct any type of game plan around this. Because, like, if you're trying to convert your own units into this and, like, boost them with a token build, uh, this could just end up hitting your opponent's units and boosting them. Like, most decks right now run quite a few tokens and go wide. 
and this can just buff your opponent's board on accident. And then, of course, like, you can't play anything that's, like, really big because that could accidentally turn into a fish man. And then your opponent's stuff could accidentally get turned into a fish man, like their big thing. And, oh, And, like, it's intargetable, so it's really hard to stop. I, I don't like it. You said yeah, you didn't I like think... it and then said nothing but good things about it. That's all I'm saying, you know. <laughs> I think, like... I think this could be a good design. I think it's just a little too uninteractive and it doesn't create fun play patterns. Um, beyond that, I think it's actually, I do actually think it's a good design. Not with Untargetable though. So the Rap Battle is a one drop spirit action from Concierta. Trigger summon if your opponent, your opponent may do the same if they do repeat this. Um, I apparently had a role in this and nobody told me. <laughs> Good, good job, stranger. Good job. I'm trying to think of what I did. <laughs> oh, well, I'm taking it. Um, oh, I think I might know why Wujek put, put me on this now. Okay. Um, so this is really fun because this lets your opponent debate. This is a mind game type card. This is, I have a summon. I might really want to get off a second time. Do I let my opponent volley back with me one more time? If not, hey, this is at least invoking chant. And so maybe it's a little weaker because there is the chance your opponent could put you in a place where this is really bad. But in other places, this could be just a really, really interesting, like, what am I going to do type scenario. Um, so, Empty, what do you think? I mean, it is basically strictly worth an invoking chant because, like... You never want to give your opponent that choice because there will be situations where your opponent has a really good summon in play and you just can't play this. Yeah. Um, I, I do think it's fairly interesting. Um, one of the things that I'm not completely sure about is if they choose to let you trigger it again, does it offer them the choice to go again and you can just keep going? Yep. It does. This can uh, do okay, that's pretty fun. <laughs> I could see some weird scenario where I like, think that's both what players have is. boards filled with summon units and just go through this over and over again. The thing is, I at that point you should probably because going infinite in this case, yeah, you will probably not try to retrigger this again unless you uh, unless you know for sure your opponent has no summon on the board. In that, card, in that regard, this card is so damn dead. Um, please don't say uh, this post time where this can go infinite. At that point, the second iteration of the if they do re if they do repeat this should be if they do, you may repeat this to actually end the fucking. Yeah, that's the other problem. The kind of the problem is that your opponent has the last word. Exactly. Um, and if, the, if you can go with it infinite, your opponent will, oh yes. Fun enough, I can just wipe your board with my own with my own summon deck. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know. I think this could be potentially interesting, but I, I see what you guys mean about it could be worse invoking chant. Maybe we can instead make it cheaper. I don't know. Uh Thrifty, what do you think? Um yeah, so I I just picked this one uh one hundred percent on um on fun factor alone and the, the flavor match here of a rap battle where you know you go and then they go and then you go until somebody has decided, you know, until they either give up, you know, or they come back again. I and I just thought it was really funny. Um and I also just really want to know when uh the rule of thirteen triggers on this. Is it after the card has repeated thirteen times? Or is it your seven choices and their six choices? It's when does... not a trigger. <laughs> oh, so it so it goes I, I on. I don't know. Forever? I gotta look at the blocks, but I'd imagine what this is is a really big loop. Well, not then, a trigger. Then it's even more fun and even more nonsensical. <laughs> and, I'm not uh, sure. I would actually have to look at the blocks for this. I'm just using my imagination based around why I think Wujek tagged me on this card. Um, cause there, this was an idea I was kicking around with him for something kind of similar that did have the back and forth potential. So, um, that's just my imagination. Uh, I think just look at the blocks, but okay. The wax watcher is a three drop strength, two, three wax golem from Lux with ward. And when you play a card that targets this draw a card, it costs one less this turn can't reduce to zero. So this is a great uh, contr contribution to the realm of Lux. I do, I wanted to, I said that thing about the art earlier. I do want to say that this 
is a particularly interesting guy because he's got the little alien ears. And um, I really like that he does feel a little bit different than the previous little wax guys. Um, and the effect is potentially pretty scary. I mean, in something like an equipment deck, you can, this is both your, um, this can serve the role of uh, the Hegan samurai that draws whenever you play an equipment, but oh, also awesome. be on tribe in a wax deck, which is, and also reduce costs. So this is like a, a triple punch potential, um, could be an issue. Um, I don't know. I like him. I love him. I'm going to upvote him. Uh, Thrifty, what do you think of this design? Do we lose um, the goblin that gives you a plus one uh, attack sword and the plus one HP sword yeah. with the rotation? I was going to say with him, it's really fun because it's like oh, one mana, reduced one mana draw. Like it's just, you know, you just build up your equipment and draw. I just, um, I included this one. I, I tried to pick something from every affinity, honestly. But um, I, I, as I said earlier, I, I really like the wax guys, um, the the little uh, wax ruffling or whatever he's called. I just call him the wax Chad because he just puts in work, dude um swinging nonstop, and um i feel like that deck you you always interact with your wax ruffling on turn two um and then turn three knows a maybe a little more up in the air so this gives you something cool to drop turn three and then if they take out your ruffling or whatever you have something new to target come turn four um so i think it just gives you more interesting choices in that deck um and it gives you more draw to maybe you know draw into more opportunities come turn four which i thought it just yeah. fit in a really good spot for what it's made for is Night Shift Merchant rotating out? Does anyone know offhand? Yeah, I think he did. Okay, so we're also losing Night Shift Merchant, which would be the other potential really busted one, maybe, possibly. Um, Grief, what do you think? I like this a lot because it's not tied to equipments or actions targeting it. It can be any card. Yeah. So therefore, any unit that can also target it um, may actually allow you to benefit from it. Therefore, it's pretty open-ended, especially in, in regards to if you're looking at um, Sviatler's Realm, which has also target effects or cards that target them, um, uh, target them when entered. And so, I, so we could probably see some really good synergies later down the line with, um, into the next rotation. Yeah, it, it's tempting, especially since we have these three new tribal heroes, to think of like, could this help tribal wax? But the thing is, it's it's interesting because Sweatlo, uh, Sweatlo's Nightlings in particular, and the Lux cards kind of enter this parallel design of like they really work well together, and you can create kind of this dual realm deck that could potentially be really neat. Um, and that's something to keep in mind for those people out there who are deck builders who are maybe locking them. I know I started locking my brain into tribal designs once the Burbs came out. But yeah, this works really, really great with side by side with the Nightlings. Um, Empty, what do you think? Yeah, I think this is sort of like Arms Master 2.0 for when Arms yeah. Master rotates out. Um, obviously, you do have to target, target this, this specifically yeah. with all your equipment and stuff to get the trigger. But I think that's kind of a valid trade off for this having Ward and reducing the cost of yeah, things. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think this may be a bit pushed. But we'll we'll have to see. It's like it's like right on the line of being balanced, so I think it might be okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, well, the other thing about this is since this is like Arms Master 2.0, you can maybe you can maybe do something with um, like the new Bully the Kindling, or if, um, yeah, and uh, maybe Bite. I don't know. Yeah, Bully the Kindling is awesome on this. Yeah, it's Bully like, the Kindling is scary yeah. on this. And Twin Pike, but Twin Pike will be rotated out. Um, and Night Shift Merchant, but Night Shift Merchant will be rotated out soon. Oops. Um, somebody. You, you hit the wrong link. Yeah, because you're supposed to put the collective link on the bottom. Um, this, this is all your fault, Grief. <laughs> okay. Elder Freshman is a two-drop mine, two-two human arcanist from nowhere in particular, with entombed drawn action from deck. I don't know why it says that. Um, it costs one less until end of next turn. Uh, so this is actually a really it, kind of an older art from Spike. I think it was like his first or second week, maybe on the on the 
uh, collective Discord and stuff, and he's brought it back. And it's a little cleaner now. It definitely reflects a lot of like his growth as a developer, but I don't know if I like it yet. Grief, tell me why you picked this card. It's basically a cute unit um, cultural engine for actions. It's okay. You can basically put it into any mind deck and you can benefit from it, especially post rotation. Mind would be funny enough to affinity with the least amount of card draw compared to strength being the, uh, being the most prevalent and spirit in the middle. Um, but I think even neutral has better tools than mind, which is funny. So it's okay. You can maybe sacrifice it because mind has a similar sub sub team of sub sack, which has been elated with forgotten over the months slash years of collective card design and maybe can be picked up again post-rotation. Because with po uh, post-rotation, we have somewhat of a clean slate and can test out the waters. Yeah, and so that, that'll be interesting. This reminds me, of course, of the Spectre Library um, being this, but also having the potential to recur stuff. Um, so even if this does get in, this will have a direct parallel in spirit. So they aren't really catching up in the... Uh, they're really catching up in the draw department. Um, I don't know. I think this could be potentially interesting. Cost reduction is always very powerful, and so that's something to note. Um, uh, empty, do you see anything particularly cool about this? Uh, I think it's pretty strong. It is. But I don't know. I mean, it's an action tutor, so there's probably something you can do from there. Yeah. Um, but that's about it. Um, Thrifty, what do you think about it? I'd just like to note that, you know, as a common that even wasted two words on from deck, you know, it feels like yeah. a pretty original. Um, not I, I say original, like obviously it's a card game. It's all going to be repeated, but like it, it's a very uh, complex, simple effect, if you will. You know, it's like on death, you draw this specific card and it costs less, you know, so you can, you know, you can do a lot of stuff with, with the the limited text but i'm um, kind of like folder says i think it's pretty good like it, it's probably too good um but eh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see i mean you, you guys say that but i couldn't think of what we would need to do to it um maybe bump an h or, or maybe mm -hmm. drop a stat point um i mean it, even if you drop a stat point this will just uh, the use case for this unit is drop it attack or block with it, you will benefit from it anyway. Yeah. Okay. The Carbine Constructor is a one-drop strength, one-two vampire robot from Mortstall with when an ally enters play, Herald 1. So we've been talking about rotation, post-rotation. Um, I was talking with uh, Cornmeal about this, and originally he also made it Scour 1, and I was like, that is going to be so many choose windows. <laughs> I would rather have this play the role that Eradication Herald did, maybe, post-rotation, and encourage you to just pop off a bunch of tokens to just get a bunch of Herald, even though, personally, I'm not a big fan of Herald, but a lot of people seem to be doing a lot of Herald design, so maybe I should give it a chance. Uh, Thrifty, what do you think of this? Um, I really love Harold. I, I tried to make Harold work for a very long time, just in general. I, I just like Harold, you know, like uh, buffing their stuff that is soon to come, whether or not you know what it is. Um, and yeah, I think this sits at a spot where it's, it's fine. It, it might not be a staple in every strength deck, but I feel like it'll have the strength decks where this is what you want. Um, instead of like, say, you know, the other one, one, two, we talked about earlier, like maybe this is what you want in that one. Cause it is that, you know, wide board, um, mm -hmm. strength deck that we talked about, which I don't think that exists right now, but you know, we're, like you said, going into rotation, um, it has Harold. I love that. And so, yeah, I just, I think it's cool. Um, and I think it's, it's fine as is. Yeah. Like that, that's actually a good point. Like if this got in, I would be like, yeah, get in your, Ichi, uh, Yoriko Ichi Nissan. That great. Awesome. Um, but, uh, as for that card, I, I don't know if we need it. I think we do. I, I really like this effect though. Empty, what do you think? Yeah. Harold cards are like kind of hard to judge since, yeah. uh, Heralding itself is such a, like, it's very weak a lot of the time because, like, you're drawing the thing later. But, like, when it goes off, it can be, like, very crushing if you get it on the correct unit. 
Um, I'm like not a huge fan of the mechanic in general. I think this is about the right position. It may be a bit too strong as a one drop. Um, but that being said, like a lot of the really good support for this is rotating out. Like my first thought was running this with glowstone mine, and then every turn you get a glowstone and herald. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that's going to be gone. But I think that if we want to keep Herald alive post rotation, we need something like this to take yeah. the place of like Eradication Herald and, and do something different. I mean, this is way better than Eradication Herald. Yeah, I mean, it's not even close. Grant, uh, what do you think? Yeah, this is basically the card that Herald actually always needed and wanted, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of confused why it never really happened because that's the perfect one drop for any kind of. Um, going tall deck that strand ever wanted to play especially if you're only dropping at least one or two minions each turn that's still plus one plus one effect on your yeah. next unit um this is a very powerful common or a one drop on um no, uh nothing uh, not really about it on your on the other hand it can also is it's also on the power level where you want to splash it properly in bullock and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Vampires will probably or probably be all over this card, even robots. Why? Because it actually can be played in the new uh, in Hawkins, and they benefit from uh, even from this. So overall, this will be the perfect new one drop for the new yeah. rotation. And so we've been talking about rotation and also uh, the starter decks. That, uh, that are going to have to be crafted post rotation. This would be a great include, um, because it's simple, it's clean. Um, but yeah, it needs it's, it's doing ten, so it's doing it's on the higher half at least. So we'll see where it goes. The malice bolt is haunts me in my dreams. It is a <laughs> three drop mind action from nowhere in particular. Deal three damage. Your opponent discards a card. So this is sort of a a, a reprint of Fireball that's also uh, costs one more, has an additional effect, sort of a side grade to it. Um, how do we feel about this? Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go first because my list is going to be short. Um, I hate discard, so I hate this card. I hate this card, so I hate this card. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> But uh, I, I, just, I, I don't know why. I've always been um, the biggest opponent of this card. No matter all the things I've been against in the past, this card takes the cake. Is like I just hate it when you have a card in your hand and you lose it. You know, it just sucks so bad. Yeah. Um, especially when you've got your, you know, your heart of the cards moment. You know, all six <laughs> cards ready to go. Next turn is the combo, and you just have to throw one away. It just sucks so bad. Um, uh, but other than that, I mean, it, it's it's probably okay. Do you choose the card that you discard, or is yes. it a random card? So I guess that oh, makes oh. it a little bit better, um, in my opinion. But I don't have a lot to say about it. I think I, I on stream, I was like, oh, discard, downvote. And, like, I just I just went about my day. Like, I don't even think about it anymore. But, um, but I mean, it's probably fine. Well, because in a game like Collective, I know we have some people that are still pushing to getting like Spectres in a better place with Elam, Halem, and Anna Time. Uh... Cough hand. <laughs> Cough hand. There we go. <laughs> uh, and so we're pushing for people to get better Spectres, and we still have a little bit of an undead deck left before rotation happens and takes all of it away. Um. So actually, this puts it in an interesting place because sometimes you're giving your opponent exactly what they need with that discard. Um, and so that could potentially be sort of a balancing factor about this. I'm not really all that sure, though. Grief, what do you think of that assessment? Um, yes and no. Yes, this is a balancing factor to the card. By the way, though, this is basically the kind of card that uh, we really needed for uh, hand disruption because most of the time most of the bullshit combos are not really interrupted sure um mind has a field uh, has a pretty good uh, field control with its bounce effect but most of them or i think even all of them are rotating out anyway um so they actually need some kind of uh removal suit that helps them out 
or getting even the edge in terms of echo, uh, in terms of echo range. So firewall reprint was obvious. The attached Discord helps uh, helps go the distance, especially with oh yeah, I'm facing either mirror match or even a control uh, or in control deck. I need to get rid of that specific card because I don't have any other option. Um, problem is though, they can choose. Yeah. So when your opponent has the choice to discard a card, they will probably discard either the card that is most favorable to them, which they can either get back or anything else, or um, the, the most useless cards in their hand. Yeah. Overall, uh, pretty good design in any aspect, at least for me. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Tracy. Yeah, empty. Uh, what's your thoughts on this? Um, I I I kind of like it. Um, I think right now this is going to be pretty weak because, like you said, um, there's a bunch of decks running around that like care about the graveyard stuff, and like if you're playing this against Spectres or Undead or like even KM who generates like a lot of trash in yeah. your hand to fuel her uh, active. This is going to be like really bad, but against everything else, um, it'll be pretty good. So yeah, I think yeah, I think it's good. I I wouldn't be sad if I saw this get in next week. Okay, so for the handsome dragon, another Metroidoid design. Handsome dragon is a three drop strength four two dragon puppet, flying overrun. Choose allies from play to shuffle in the deck, deal damage to any target, and draw equal to cards for turn this way. So, um, I think I'm afraid of this. I don't know. Um, because that little sweep effect could be nothing, and it could be everything, just depending on what's going on. Um, who picked it? This is the start of your picks, right, Empty? Yeah. I'll let you talk on this one first. Yeah, I, I love this design. I think it's awesome. And it's like this weird support for like a, a strength swarm deck where you like get out a whole bunch of tokens. Uh, and it has like two different things that you can do with it. Like this can end the game basically if your opponent's low on health. It can be like a really cheap way to uh, deal damage equal to the number of units you have them play and like get in that final bit of damage you need to kill them. And then in like a big swarm deck, you can use this to refuel and then just like get rid of all the little trash tokens you have sitting around not doing anything and turn those into like removing your opponent's biggest threat and then drawing a whole bunch of cards and refilling your hand. Yeah. Um, I do think in its current version, it's pretty pushed, but I, I really like it. I it think is it's a little awesome. push. It almost makes me want to non- like it almost makes me want to like non-jokingly like see if chickens are viable with this <laughs> stuff like chicken tower or just sweeping up a bunch of maybe um beaconstein um <laughs> grave seemed to really cringe at that joke so i want to hear him talk next <laughs> oh my God. first of all i I get I get a slight um, brain aneurysm just from the pun in the name. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> um, but overall, this is a unique, be pretty strong, and see, holy hell, please pull it off, or you're basically x oneing yourself. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, it's um, card advantage neutral, but board advantage bad. Basically, um, not no. It's card advantage. The card advantage really bad because you, card advantage even takes your board into account. Um, so, yeah, I hope you're nuking your po uh, opponent for six damage by shuffling all your French back into your deck, um, and <laughs> so. In that regard, I like the card. It's pretty unique in what it does, and I really want to see how you could have abused it the most. It will probably be quite uh, interesting if we have cards that don't care about dying, but leaving the field. So 
you can probably put this at four into a neon deck. Yeah. And put something like neon tray and stuff where it leaves a body behind when it leaves the play. Yeah. But yeah, no, this is a chicken's finisher, Grief. <laughs> now let me let me paint a picture for you. Your opponent has uh you know two health, you have eleven. You have nine units on the board. You play <laughs> this, return them all to your deck, and hit yourself in the face so that you go down to one health. And then you play that sheep that gains agile if it's your only unit and then hit them in the face for just the total style points. That's, that is the only use of this card, I think we'll all agree. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold on, guys. Thrifty just brought something up. If you really wanted to, you could really use this as like a three-mana draw one deal one card. Because <laughs> you could just select itself. If you had absolutely nothing and needed a paint for some reason, you could do it. Hold on, is this, is this Pioneer's Power Creep? Hold on a second. <laughs> Wait uh, a that second. That makes a one one and gains your HP. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's play them blue in a fireball dot deck. Okay. The Neon Onomusha is a two-drop mind, one-three demon samurai from Aesthetica. Ambush, entrance, and rage, draw a card, and discard a card. We don't have a lot of rummage. Rummage is a really good effect. This could be really cool. I like it. I don't really have that much more to say. Thrifty, you start. Um, this is one that I just, like, I'm kind of indifferent on. Like, I don't I don't really care if it exists. Uh, I almost never play mind. Um... It, but it, it it seems fine. Like I, I look at it and I'm like, eh, that's that's not insane. I don't think. And then I'm like, well, but maybe it is. I, I don't know. The cards like this, I have a really hard time like placing a value on, just because so I so infrequently like play anything like it. So it's not the kind of card you you like playing, but it's also not the kind of card you would mind playing again. Yeah, yeah. No, if somebody oh. else played this, I wouldn't think like, man, they've got this garbage. You know, I wouldn't hate it. I mean, is, if you're if you're discarding your own cards, that's fine. It's when you're discarding my cards, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think this is a really nice, efficient rummager, and I'm happy with it. MD, what do you think of this? Yeah, I I think it's a very nice, efficient rummager too. That's why like I enjoy this card. It's like a really good defensive unit too. Mm -hmm. with uh the ambush ambush in mind by the way which doesn't happen that often um but is interesting and like i think you might be able to run this off affinity in uh spirit especially if we get some more specter support um but like being able to rummage this often leads to like some really cool decks where you like you can run a bunch of rebound things maybe or like little token generators in order to uh have like really efficient cards to discard and then of course just like even if you don't have that rummaging in general it's just nice to filter cards yeah um sadly there's no i mean it's only got the one attack point because i'm almost tempted in uh to this could turn a kagamusha we talked about earlier that got in into a <laughs> play this duel deal one draw one discard one draw one discard one exactly um, which is actually pretty pretty good if you have uses for discarded cards. Um, not too sure about that as a strategy. Just something I wanted to note. Uh, Grief, what do you think? I mean, this would be probably pretty good kind of a target compared to the Ichi Samurai that we had today. Mm -hmm. Since Rummage 2, pretty damn good. Especially if you can actually do something for 1 as well. Makes Kyle for a bet quote-unquote better meticulous research in red um on the other hand this is uh, this leaves more space for more neon phoenix designs which we already seen in past which want to be in the graveyard and can return from there so it's interesting to see something like that back in spirit uh, back in mind because we had a uh, mind is pretty much known for its draw and discard effects yeah and, and I, I think I definitely want Neons to be one of the things we can hold on to after rotation. I push for this with Neons and Zag and Onimusha. It would be another good push to keep Neons alive. Um, that's just my personal preferences. I really like them. 
And so I think we got one more. Is that four on the thing? And pacing. Oops. That one is also not my fault. That's not on me this time. <laughs> yeah, but it's also, it's not Grief's fault this time. So there's that. Oh, that's my fault. Balancing factor. I want it to be known it is also not my fault. The DN accident is a three drop neutral action from Tutela, but choose a tribe and play. Your units gain that tribe for the rest of the game. So this is potentially kind of cool, I guess. Um, I feel like this is kind of ruining the point. There's one thing to be said about specific units like shapeshifters that fill holes in tribal decks versus something like this, which basically says, there you go, here's your tribal deck. I mean, if you have a reliable way to get to this, this takes all the, I think, the interest in the color out of deck building um, for it. Um, what did you think, Empty? Why'd you pick this? Um, I picked it because, like, I like the idea of having, like, a dual tribe deck. I just don't think this is the way to do it. Um, mm -hmm. For one thing, like, this version of the card is, like, really, really weak. Because, like, paying three mana, and a lot of the time, the turn you play this, this is going to do, like, almost nothing. Yeah. In order for the rest of the game to get, like, really minor benefits from all your units being tribes. Like, there's a few weird things you could do, but I think a lot of the time, uh, it's just going to be way too weak. And then the other thing is, exactly like you said, like, a lot of the fun part about building tribe decks is, like, the restriction with the tribal cards and this takes that out because now suddenly everything is that tribe yeah like if you wanted this to do anything you would have to make it like cheaper and or innate and if you made it cheaper and or innate or if you left it as is it still kind of ruins the point of a tribal deck is my thoughts uh grief what do you think i don't really get a, it ruins the, uh it ruins the fun of the tribal deck the color of the deck building stuff but i mean Sometimes you really wish a specific card was a specific tribe, so it can actually benefit from its uh, from its uh, strengths. Because the stupid part about shapeshifters is they are quote unquote uh, fillers, and that's the problem. They are fillers. They don't actually do something for the tribe. They don't actually gain the tri uh, uh, give them the tribe. They at max gain the tribe and. That's not that doesn't do much for cards when they're basically as weak as Fritz main, which oh yeah, she is flying support-ish, but on the other hand, I actually want my damn golem who has the good effect to be a vampire so he can benefit from vampire cards that actually synergize with him. Well, hold on, hold on, Grief. You're saying you're saying something I'm not saying. I am <laughs> all in favor of tribe changing effects, right? Yeah. Think vampire fangs make something a vampire. In part because I'm like, maybe someone will run a, run tribal vampires someday. I also made Mass of Many, which specifically combines tribes so that you can use it to fill in other spots. Yeah. I just think doing it on a broad scale like this is a mistake. No, that's actually not really a mistake. It's actually a pretty good way to inter uh, interlock different things. And that's basically coming from me and my actually really jank background from Magic the Gathering when it comes to slivers. Yeah. Because something like Sliver Hives don't exist. No. Um, Sliver Hives just, okay, small tangent. Sliver Hives don't turn every damn monster, uh, creature on the field, even that of your opponent, into slivers. Have you ever heard of Dormant Sliver? Dormant Sliver turns every sliver on the board into a defender. Have you seen defender support cards? <laughs> yeah. Now, now you're getting behind what I'm interested in. The, the cards like these are really good for casual deck building when you want to explore these interlocking. Oh yeah, I can put a uh, card a, a, a to Z into my deck. They don't share the tribe. Now they have the tribe. Now they benefit. Now my uh, weird, trashy 15 card combo actually is pulled off. This is a good casual card. The iteration of it currently is not good, but a broad gaining or changing tribe effect is something that a game at least should have. 
Yeah, I just think making it too much better would make it... No, no, not better, but different, because this is A, weak, and B, kind of tasteless. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are missing the biggest thing here, which is Kagemusha. <laughs> and every card being a samurai. No, that's actually what that's actually a point I wanted to make next. Stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> or even yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh Thrifty, you wanna you have any closing notes on this one? Kage Musha. <laughs> uh no, I, I don't I don't hate it. I um a lot of my uh my very like first designs, um, like when I first started playing the game was like um feed become a fish you know so that you could turn things into other stuff like i was a big fan of of messing with tribes um and i don't know that i hate you know all of your units uh gaining a tribe um but i feel like it would be better if it replaced the tribe because then you know it, it forces you to be a little more creative like if you have a dual tribe stuff where it only buffs one or the other now if you mm -hmm. do that then you do have to lose some of that uh, benefit so you can't run like two tribes and then hey they all benefit yeah. off of each other now it's like well okay if you're wanting to do the the plants only thing then you've got to pick the cards that work with plants or samurai or whatever you happen to yeah. choose and and as i think it was bonk showed me it's really easy to make it you know replace versus swaps or adds tribe on there so that yeah. shouldn't be a problem for anybody it's super simple yeah so um so yeah, I mean, there, there's reasons I'm seeing on both sides for the for the what what do we do about this kind of thing. But I'm I personally think that the fun part of tribal is the restrict is that it, it's restrictive. Um, but I can definitely see what grief's saying about of maybe this is fun as casual jank. But if it's fun as casual jank, we kind of gotta leave the card being bad to a certain extent. Um, because if you you then become comes push, especially with stuff like Lazaro, things can get dicey. That's my thoughts on it. Anyway, so I'm going to close out to share. Uh, this was a great episode, Thrifty. It was so great having you on. I had so much fun. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I, um, I'm a longtime fan. Glad to, to, to be a guest. It's good to know you actually watch the show. Some of our guests don't. My, <laughs> my only contact with Collective for, since like February has been the show. I just... I'd be at work and I'd be like, ah, oh, new stranger to that episode over here. And I just play that as I, as I worked away in the background to kind of have an idea of what was going on. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm an actual watcher. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, thank you. That means a lot to me. And thank you, of course, as always to grief and empty for being, being with me through thick and thin. You're welcome. At least I didn't shit on too many designs this episode. <laughs> And Empty is just uh, sitting there. Uh, Empty needs some sleep today, I think. He seems yeah. Tired. <laughs> He's a little tired. It's okay. You can get some sleep after the show. Um, so, guys, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Remind me why exactly I'm doing this. Um, and keep playing Collective and keep voting on cards. Bye.